Hello everyone, today I will be playing a game of chess and I'm going to walk you through what I think and the opening and the middle game, tactics, strategies, the end game, all that sort of stuff. And uh, your job as a viewer is to listen to what I think, compare it with what you think and then we can all improve. Um, that being said, I have been playing chess for over 10 years now. I achieved the candidate master title in 2021. And I, I, I am still playing chess, so I'm still playing competitively. So we should, we should have fun. I found an opponent and I'm playing with a white piece. So let's open it with d4, occupying the four central squares. My opponent plays c6, interesting. Hmm. So c6 I'm not a big fan of, but considering that black is probably going to play d5, then it's fine. Because c6 supports d5. So for example, after c4, I'm expecting my opponent to play d5, yeah. And this is very likely to transpose to something called the the Slav, and which is very solid. I'm gonna play knight c3, developing my pieces. Hmm. I'm thinking when I'm silent, I'm thinking of course, but I'm also thinking what is my opponent going to play? Yeah, good. So my opponent could have played e6, but then this bishop would have been a little bit sad because this bishop cannot go to so many squares, and that's bad. So bishop f5. My opponent wants to say, hey. I'm going to take out this bishop out of the pawn chain, and then I'm going to play e6. This is what we call a pawn chain. Interesting. Interesting. Now, the back, the, the reason why bishop f5 sometimes is not good in some games is that after pawn takes and queen b3, sorry, this queen is attacking d5 and b7 at the same time. So in chess, when you attack two things at the same time, that's what we call a fork. Two or more things, so it could be three, four, or five. But if you're attacking at least two things... That's a fork. Okay, so queen d7 doesn't actually defend the pawn on d5, which means that I could probably attack it. But then I ask the question, would I rather attack and gain a pawn and win in material, or would I rather bring my piece and try to just compensate with activity rather than gaining gaining material. Sometimes material is not the most important thing. Sometimes the most important thing is how act active your pieces are, how, how much they're doing and how powerful they are. But I think in this case I'm going to take the pawn because I don't see any any compensation for black. When you're, when you're losing a pawn, ideally you would like to have some sort of advantage for the pawn, so, so it's like worth it. But in this case I don't think black has any dangerous compensation. In fact, if black takes, then after takes, my knight would be jumping to c7 already. Okay, my opponent played knight f6, attacking my queen. So I have two options. I could I could go go back to any square, or I could take back to his queen, her queen, sorry, to, to my opponent's queen. And I think what I will do is... I'm very tempted to just drop back. But... Okay, I'm changing my mind. Why? I'm gonna take back to exchange the queens. Now, why why would I exchange the queens? Because I'm I'm up material. And if you're I'm an extra have an extra pawn. So if you have an extra pawn, you should trade most of the pieces. Now this is a rule that um, applies most of the most of the cases, but there are some cases where trading pieces is not the best. Normally in chess you have this kind of rules. And they don't always apply because chess is such a complicated game that we can only, only sorry, we can only apply these things to certain positions, and they're generally understood, but they're not. They're no. They're not that the absolute truth. Now, in the last couple of moves, sorry, in the last couple of moves, my opponent played e5, good move, occupying the center. I took knight takes, and I get e4. Now this this pawn chain is very annoying for this bishop because these pawns are in a light square. And guess what? This bishop is in a light square. So if this bishop is a crashing against the white pawns, then it's not very good for, for black. I'm gonna continue developing my pieces, my bishop, attacking the knight. If bishop d6, which is a natural move, taking out this bishop and preparing to castle, I'm going to castle on my own in the long side. And I'm going to attack this bishop with a rook. Okay, so my opponent moves away, I'm gonna castle. Now this rook is active, now this king is a little bit more safe. But if you notice, this king is in an open file. So normally, when you castle alongside, actually what it, it takes two moves to castle and to make your king secure. Because you have to move it again. 
and well you don't have to but if, if you don't want your king to be insecure yeah that would be a good idea i'm gonna play bishop c4 developing my pieces and further i'm gonna play knight g e2 now both of us have taken out our pieces and we should be ready to 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 start planifying in the middle game so we've both castled now we're no longer in the opening now we're in the middle game it's official um, so my plan is going to be first. Sometimes you have little plans and sometimes you have more ambitious long-term plans. My little plan is going to put my king on b1. Now this king is a little bit more secure. Now my opponent attacks. Well, I don't get to continue with my plan, so I'm just going to react to 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 the to opponent's um, move. My opponent attacks again. I'm going to react again. And many people would think, well, David, you're losing because you're just you're just defending, defending, defending. No. It's not necessarily true. If my opponent is attacking me, it doesn't mean that I'm doing um, bad. It's It means that he's attacking pieces or she's attacking pieces and I have to react in a way. So if your opponent makes a, an attacking move, attacking move, you should make a defensive move most of the time. And when your opponent makes a defensive move, you should probably make an attacking move. That there are actually four categories of moves. Um, attacking moves, defensive moves, neutral moves, and blunders. And so if your opponent makes a blunder, then yeah, that's good news for you. Oh, oh, I almost flagged, sorry. So my opponent played g5, I took with the bishop. My opponent plays knight d4, but that square is attacked twice by my knight and by my rook. So I, I win a piece. I'm attacking this bishop too. So I'm going to play bishop f6. Now this bishop is annoying to the king. So if a rook ends up in the g file, like this, there's going to be checkmate. In fact, there's only one way to stop it in a decent way, and that's h6. Let's see if our opponent finds that. Oh, okay. And that would be the game. Thank you very much, Dusan1232. Oh, no, sorry. No rematch. No rematch. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope that was instructive. And uh, I will be making more of these videos because um, I'm assuming they're instructive and you enjoy them. Um, thank you very much. Subscribe. Why not? And um, yeah.